Hello there, welcome to AgriTalk. Today we'll be discussing about biogas production and we are at Biogas International and they will be telling us how you convert this biogas into fertilizer and also gas for your kitchen. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Join me as we start this. Right, today we are joined by Luis Ngugi, who is here to just explain to us this process of biogas production. Nyaji? Mzuri sana. Ukofiti? Ukofiti kabisa. All right, um, so yeah. um, just explain to us how this process starts. Yeah, so what we have here, this is, uh, uh, it's called Flexi Biogas System. Mm -hmm. So Flexi Biogas is a new innovation in biogas that does not require any construction or digging. So this is the, the digester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the digester has an inlet and an outlet on the other end. Mm -hmm. And now on the inlet, a unique feature about uh, this system is that it runs on any organic waste. All right. Yeah. So like cow dung, uh, pig dung, chicken dung. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from uh, the animal uh, waste, you can still use waste like kitchen vegetable waste, food remainder, uh, market waste. Yeah. So, so everything, you, you just mix the waste with water mm -hmm. in a ratio of one is to one. Okay. And then you introduce it now. Here we have the inlet. Okay. Yeah. And um, let me just ask, for example, you've said the inlet to this is, is, the, is that one? Here, yeah. Is this one over here? Yeah. So do we get waste I immediately and we throw maybe uh, peels of bananas, mm. uh, Mango that has ro has, has yeah, it reached a, a, a yeah. stage of rotting. Yeah. Do you just throw it there, or there's a process that it goes through in order to make it uh, avail available to just enter this inlet? So, so the waste goes in as uh, as as fresh as, as it comes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, so you don't uh, you know keep the waste somewhere or pile it somewhere and uh, and then let it rot. So when it's still fresh, uh, uh, example, if it's now the kitchen vegetable waste, the food remainder, just mix it with water and uh, pour it inside the digester. Yeah, this is a grinding machine. Mm -hmm. We're using it to grind. Uh, what is in this container? This is uh, uh, market waste. Mm -hmm. We get market waste from uh, from Gong. All right. You know from you know the traders at Ngong. Mm -hmm. Have the see the mangoes, you know the bananas, the mm -hmm. melon, just mm -hmm. the normal market waste. Then uh, we grind it using this machine mm -hmm. just to make it uh, pulpy, and then uh, now we feed uh, what comes out uh, as you can see over there on this side. Yeah, it's like uh, porridge foam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is what goes inside the digester. So that is what we put here. Yeah, that is what now uh, we put here. Okay. Yeah, once it goes inside, it starts uh, uh, decomposing naturally. Uh -huh. And as it decomposes, it makes this bag to swell. See right. this bag is swollen? Yes, it's swollen. Yeah, that, that, uh, now that is gas that is trapped in there. All right. Yeah, so the gas, uh, we tap it using this pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this pipe goes straight 
uh, to the point of use now, like in the kitchen. All right. Yeah. In um, uh, for water heating, in your oven. Uh, you know, there are all these applications that you can use the gas for. All right. And uh, this this specific, uh, do we have a place where you buy this specific um, material from? This material, this one. Yeah. Well, uh, th this technology is uh, basically it's made in Kenya and uh, everything we just source it from, uh, it's sourced locally. All right. Yeah, as you see, we, we, are, we are using uh, readily available materials like the yeah, pipe. The pipe. You know, this. Mm -hmm. So that means even if there's a, a breakage or something, it's very easy for you to repair it because, uh, you know, all the materials are just sourced from, uh, you know, local hardware. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And now, l l let us just get a little deeper into this. So we have the waste. Yes. It has been uh, grinded and then you feed it, uh, you feed this uh, through this uh, pipe. Yes. For example, how long does it take uh, for it to produce gas when yeah. it's here? So what happens is, uh, example, when we come to install the system, um, we start it off using cow dung because cow dung has the right culture of nutrients uh, for decomposition. Mm -hmm. we start, so we started off uh, using about uh, uh, 400 kilos of waste. Mm -hmm. That's like half a, half a pickup load. So we mix the waste with water and train the user or, you know, on feeding. Then the waste sits in the bag or the digester for two to five days mm -hmm. or a week. Mm -hmm. So after a week, you'll notice that the digester has started swelling and that means gas production has started. Now from there you'll just feed it, all, all, all you'll need to do is just feed it one bucket of waste every day. So this is, this, uh, this, I mean the, the process is continuous. Mm. Yeah. So once you've, uh, the system has already started producing gas, uh, every day, uh, I mean every day you feed it, you know, gas production will still continue. All right. It's, it's, yeah. And for example, I, I, I believe there's, there's, there's some inside there. Yeah. So after, after maybe you've uh, used the gas. Yes. Now, do you just leave it like that and say maybe you are going to put it the next day? So, or you put the waste immediately after you've you've you, you've used the gas? Well, after you've used the gas, you'll notice that the the bag has uh, inflated, it's gone down, mm -hmm. and that means uh, you need to feed it again. So it will depend on uh, you know your gas usage. Your gas usage is what determines how often uh, you feed it. Okay. So we advise our clients to feed the digester uh, on a daily basis. Just the one bucket of waste is enough to give you gas for uh, for cooking the whole day. You mm -hmm. know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You boil even water for bathing. So a whole day is cooking. Mm -hmm. And then you find uh, some of our clients. They come and tell us. You see, the digester is swollen this way. Mm -hmm. You know. So for them, we will tell them. Uh, you know, they can reduce the feeding to the same bucket of waste twice or thrice a week. Okay. and they'll still have uh, enough gas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, for example, this, uh, this digester, yeah. is can, where can we use the gas from here? Is it available to be used maybe in factories or in uh, just a domestic homestead? Because, because I can see the size yeah. and maybe... So is, can, can a factory say we are coming up with this and, no, and then we want to use this size to... Yes. To, uh, in our maybe daily yeah. daily operations? Well, uh, we have uh, various models. We have biogas for domestic use and uh, for commercial use. Mm -hmm. So for domestic use, it's this size. Oh, this is, this is yeah. for domestic? For mm -hmm. our this one, is, we call it the standard model. This, it's, uh, in terms of measurement, it's, uh, it's one and a half meters by six meters. Mm -hmm. And its gas capacity is uh, uh, six cubic. Yeah, so this one is basically for families and then now for factories, for now commercial use, for markets, uh, you know, institutions like uh, universities. Now we have the commercial biogas system, which is, uh, it's right over here. So now depending on, uh, your, you know, your energy requirements, we can always design a system that will meet that capacity. All right. Yeah, so this one is basically for domestic use and then now for commercial use, like for factories, so now we have uh, bigger systems for, for running you know, the factories. All right. Yeah. Now we'll get to the, the big ones. Yeah. But now let, let us look at this because I can see um, the pipe is connected. Yes. It's connected to, it's to, connected to, to, to that middle part. What does that mean? Because does that mean that the gas comes directly from there to, to the house or what is this pipe for? 
Yeah, so so this digester is uh, is pillow shaped. Mm -hmm. So you, you know you can imagine a pillow. The the highest point is usually at the middle. So that's the point where we we tap the gas from, mm -hmm. right at the middle. Yeah. So and then now the gas goes straight now to uh, like to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So um, this this is what gets the gas out. Yes. Yes. All right. This is the, uh, the gas line. Okay. Yeah. I'm very curious to know now what is on this other side. Yeah. What what's here? This is uh, this is now the outlet. So basically, our digester is like uh, your digestive system. There you have your mouth, you chew your food, food goes to the stomach, mm -hmm. and then after it's digested, it automatically exits your system. So this is a replica. It has the mouth on the inlet, and then now uh, the, the stomach. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then now here we have uh, now the outlet. So in this system, it's, uh, what comes out is very rich organic fertilizer, and it comes out by itself. So once, example, you say you feed one bucket of waste, uh, fresh waste on the inlet. Yes. On this other side, you'll uh, get one bucket of now very rich organic fertilizer. So once it's got inside the digester, it's fully broken down and released uh, its gas potential, mm -hmm. which is now biogas. And then now what comes out is the nutrients that were trapped in those fruits, mm -hmm. in those, uh, you know, the kind of waste that you put in there. Mm -hmm. So so now, the, uh, so what comes out comes out in liquid form. You just apply it directly to the roots of plants. You can spray it on the, you, I mean, you can dilute it and then spray it on the leaves of plants. Mm -hmm. It acts as a very good foliar or an insect repellent, yeah. All right, and now um, I'm, I'm very curious to, to just want to know, the gas that uh, comes out through that pipe yeah. is strictly going to the kitchen? Yes. And it's going to act just like the normal K gas that people <laughs> that people use. Or explain to me about that. Methane gas now is uh, it's the safest gas in the world. Yeah, it will uh, never explode. So uh, as you'll see in the kitchen, it's uh, uh, you know a blue flame. Um, so this 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 you've said is just for the homestead for a family of four people. Yeah. For small families of four to six people. For families of four to six people. Yeah. All right. And then now we have the waste that goes to the shamba. Yes. And as we can see, we can see the shamba is very, you can see the, the, the plants there are really, really uh, telling you that yeah. we are being fed well. The nutrients are just uh, are, are all over the place. All right, so uh, what is this? What, what is exactly, they look like meters for electricity. Uh -huh. Yeah, so these are just gas meters. Mm -hmm. And you're taking, uh, the, you're measuring the gas volume produced from uh, the standard model. All right. So the family of 46 people from the commercial digester, which is this uh, sitting here. And then we have uh, an extra large model, so on this other side. All right. So, so far we know uh, the, the standard model for the fo uh, small families is producing enough gas to meet energy requirements mm -hmm. for, for the families of 46 people. And the extra large model is producing twice the amount of gas than the standard model. So now for the extra large model, uh, for the extra gas, you can still use it in uh, doing things like domestic chicken brooding. You can do domestic uh, uh, baking, you know, um, hot showers. There are, those, there are all these uh, other appliances that, that we can they, use the gas for. They use the gas I'm for, really yeah. curious, there's something going on here. Can we, yeah. just, can we just see how this is done? So what is he doing right now? Sorry. Yeah, so what's happening is uh, uh, Rafael is just uh, uh, taking this waste, uh, putting it in drums. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, digesters uh, uh, in estates and in homesteads, and the people don't have, uh, you know, we can say, we can call it feedstock mm -hmm. for feeding the digester. So we supply, uh, uh, you know, the different homesteads with, with their uh, already grinded waste. All right. Yeah, so one bucket uh, is enough for doing uh, cooking for a day or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And for example, if if what if you need the whole drum? Like I can see he wants to yeah. fill the whole the whole drum. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how can uh, maybe can, can it take like a week or two days? Well, when it's a whole drum, it will last. Th these are 145 liter uh, drum, mm -hmm. so uh, this will last for, for for about two weeks. For about two weeks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite a lot. So in this system, you just need one bucket. Mm -hmm. It's really enough for for meeting all your uh, domestic energy needs for a day. For a day. One uh, bucket. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we've seen this uh, being fed into a drum. Yes. All right, so how much of this goes to the commercial that you've explained, the, yeah. the bigger uh, biodigester? Yes, so we have uh, uh, this digester over here, we call it the T-Rex. Mm -hmm. This is a T-Rex uh, 30, meaning it produces 30,000 liters of gas every day. So this one, uh, uh, we install it in, in farms, you know, like poultry farms, in uh, pig farms, uh, you know, in uh, schools, yeah, you know, in schools is where you have a lot of uh, food wastage, you know, a lot exactly. of kitchen vegetable waste yes. in campuses. Mm. So basically areas with, uh, you know, high energy demand. Mm -hmm. We also install it in markets for managing, uh, you know, organic waste from, uh, from the markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one is basically for large capacity For use. large capacity use. So how many kilograms does this commercial bar just take? Yeah, so for this size, this one takes in uh, 400 kilos of waste. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum uh, feeding rate you can feed it. So this, this this one is medium commercial. We have small commercial, which is like uh, half of this digester, mm -hmm. and then large commercial, which is like twice this uh, digester. So so like the large commercial, uh, we have a system that uh, we call it the T-Rex 50, T-50. That one produces 50,000 liters of gas uh, every day, mm -hmm. and uh, it takes in about 800 kilos of waste uh, per day. Mm -hmm. The small commercial, we call it a T-Rex T15. That one produces 15,000 liters of gas every day. In terms of waste, it takes in about 200 kilos mm -hmm. of waste uh, in a day. That's the maximum you can feed it. All right. So again, also like for farmers, for markets, uh, you know, these areas. Uh, depending on the, the, you know, the waste generated, we can always design a digester to, you know, to manage that waste. Mm -hmm. So the commercial system, uh, it's a multi-chamber uh, digester. Mm -hmm. So that is chamber one, this chamber two. This one here? This yeah. chamber two, okay. Chamber three, uh -huh. you know, that with that to chamber four, chamber five. It's designed this way so that just in case maybe there's an injury or something has happened to chamber two, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you can repair it and, uh, you know, the other chambers continue producing gas independently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or uh, if maybe you've utilized gas from chamber, let's say, two, uh, you know, you can uh, just close it using uh, this valve. So basically each chamber has its own, uh, is tapping gas from its own space. All right. Yeah. And then, so? Yeah. I'm curious, I, I think you, you'll just continue, but I, I'm yeah. curious to, there are two, there, there are two, is it biodigesters? There's yeah. the one on top, mm. and then there's the one on the bottom. Yeah. So are they serving the same, the same purpose or? Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, they serve the same purpose. So this, uh, this lower one, the red one, mm -hmm. it's tapping gas from uh, that section of, uh, you know, the digester. Mm -hmm. Then because gas production happens every time, you find that uh, all the balloons are swollen this way and gas production is still happening. So excess gas is stored in this uh, oh, so the upper one is storage excess balloons. Gas. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So these balloons are just storing uh, there, storing excess gas. So mm -hmm. when you want to run things like machinery or uh, you know doing things like uh, chicken brooding, you can always run it off from the stored gas mm -hmm. and then uh, you use the the other gas for other uses. Mm, all right. And yeah. I'm also curious. Yes. Do these uh, biodigesters ever burst? Because you know, sometimes the gas can be so much, can be a lot. Yeah. So do you, find, do you have cases where maybe they burst? Uh, well, the, the, uh, on this system, uh, it has a safety mechanism. Like on the domestic system, on the mouth of the digester, we have a pipe that uh, basically seals the uh, the mouth of the digester. 
So now, uh, when what happens is if there's excess gas and uh, you know you've not utilized the gas, uh, the digester usually bursts out uh, its zips. So, so you wouldn't want uh, your digester to get there. So you just uh, when you see it swollen, it means you, you just do something with the gas. You can boil water, mm -hmm. and boil uh, you know you can cook there, yeah, just to utilize the gas. Okay. But in case uh, uh, the zip comes off. You can, uh, it's very easy to, to seal it. So we, we train uh, our clients. Uh, whenever, when we're installing, part of the training is uh, how to assemble the digester, mm -hmm. how to feed it, how to troubleshoot uh, whenever there are, uh, you know, little problems. Yeah. So what are the favorable temperatures under which um, a biodigester thrives very well? Yeah, so the digester thrives on uh, just the normal body temperature. Because when you look at the mi microorganisms that uh, are inside the digester, they are just uh, the same body, uh, you know, the same te temperature as mammals, between uh, 25 and 36 degrees. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, uh, you know the right temperature for microorganisms to thrive and uh, you know just be mm -hmm. you know natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for a farmer who wants to maybe include the biodigester in the farm. Yeah. and you have um, this changing weather patterns. You never know, maybe it's raining, there's sun. So what is the advice that you can give them to make sure that they uh, maintain it in the right temperature? Because the temperatures sometimes go up to yeah. 19 degrees. Yeah. yeah. So for the digester, we, we cover it with a greenhouse. And then on the greenhouse cover, we add a chenette cover, uh, something similar to this. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the greenhouse cover actually uh, it sets a, a micro uh, climate inside the digester. So when there is uh, you know excessive sunlight, you know the temperatures in there are also hot, and mm -hmm. that means gas production is high because uh, the waste is digesting at a faster rate. Mm -hmm. When it's cold and uh, it's covered with a greenhouse, you still find that, that uh, the temperatures in there are, st are still optimum for, you know, for the microorganisms, which is, which is 25 to, you know, to 36 degrees. Mm. Yeah, so the, green, the greenhouse cover actually now, uh, uh, you know, it sets the, the right temperatures for decomposition to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if someone can't get the greenhouse cover, yeah. can they use any other material different? Well, when uh, we we send the we, we sell the digester, uh, you know, it's inclusive of the you know the digester bag, the piping, the greenhouse cover and the chenette cover, a double burner stove. So it's inclusive of uh, the whole package. You won't have to go uh, somewhere else to outsource, uh, you know, uh, these materials. Mm -hmm. So it comes as a package, and then the system will last for uh, over 15 years. Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. And now the double burner stove yeah what is its importance in such a process yeah the uh you know a lot of people know biogas is for cooking so the you know the stove comes together with, with, the, the, with the biogas digester because uh, now that's how you'll get to utilize uh, the gas mm -hmm. and biogas is not just uh, a cooking solution uh you know you can do things like uh, fruit and vegetable drying can do things like uh, water heating or showers. Can run machineries like for uh, like a chaff cutter or generators. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there are all these appliances that uh, y you can do with the energy. Mm. So we say biogas is just uh, just the same as uh, your other regular energy forms. All right. Yeah. So this basically uh, uh, the lady is feeding her biogas system. Uh, one gas diversion goes to the kitchen. Another one comes into a generator. So we modify generators, whether it's a, a diesel generator or a petrol generator, to run on 20% diesel or petrol and 80% biogas. The 20% is just for starting up uh, the engine. As soon as it starts, biogas flows in, and now from the generator you can run your chaff cutter, you can plug in your milking machines, your hammer mills, or uh, you know, you basically power your whole farm. All right, we have seen the biodigester. We have also seen the grinder, which grinds the waste into a liquid form and then it's put into the biodigester. Right now, we are going for a short break. We'll be back with more.
Welcome back. This is AgriTalk. Today we are talking about biogas production. We've already seen the biodigester and how it works and some of the uses of the gas. Right now we are just going to move to the chamber and see how the bio waste is converted into fertilizer and how it helps the plants to grow. This is a drip irrigation system, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, now the fertilizer that comes out of uh, the biogas digester it comes out in liquid form. Mm -hmm. So that fertilizer, we, we pump it uh, to uh, uh, two overhead tanks over here, and then now it drips down uh, through the drip line uh, by gravity now to this we call vertical gardens. Mm -hmm. What is the importance of this? Yeah, so vertical gardening is uh, uh, it's like an improved method of farming uh, where, you know, uh, when people want to plant uh, things in urban areas, you challenged with space, people are used to planting in sacks. And, and uh, sack gardening, uh, what happens is over time, uh, the soil compacts and, uh, you know, the roots of plants are not able to spread mm -hmm. the roots. Mm -hmm. uh, but on this uh, vertical gardens, you find that uh, each plant is on its own independent space. Like this plant is on its own space here. These plants are there on their own space. Yes. So it uh, so they are able to, to spread their roots very easily as compared to uh, you know the suck gardening. Yeah. So the the liquid fertilizer since now it's liquid it just flows directly. Flows directly. Uh, yeah. Through the drip system. All right. Even without the drip, uh, using vertical gardens, it's very easy to water. Mm -hmm. You just come with a can, uh, you know a jerry can, and uh, yeah, go exactly. around and uh, you're done. Uh, you know, watering. When it comes to weeding, you just weed the plants. As, uh, you know, w when you're standing, you're just farming while, uh, <laughs> while, while standing. you're standing. Yeah. All right. Down over there, we have now the normal chamber that you that you that that you are used to. And we don't have this uh, vertical chamber, so we are just going to move down there and look at the normal chamber that is on the ground, um, which has been uh, segmented into some parts. And then we'll see, we'll, we'll be able to see kale, we'll be able to see onions, and see how this system has been used on the other side. All right, we are at the edge of the vertical uh, gardens that Louis had shown us earlier. And as you can see, this is the end of vertical ones. And then we have the normal way of planting that we are used to. And we have Josephat there who we are going to meet just in a few. Josephat, yes. hi, Thanks. how are you? You're good? Yeah. Thank you for joining us. And tumona waste kwa yeah. biodigester na tukambiwa kwamba inaletwa kwa shamba. Yeah. So ebu to explain your process vile uwa mnafanya na importance yake ni gani ka kwa mimea. Uh, hiyo waste ya biosirari, mm -hmm. hiyo inatusaidia ikitoka kwa system ya biogas, mm -hmm. inatusaidia kwa shamba ku, kutengeneza mboga, ikuwe healthy kabisa. Mhm. Mm Tena inasaidia ukispray kwa matawi wadudu kama wako ina reduce wadudu. Oh. Yeah. So pia ina 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 act kama fertilizer, si ndio? Yeah. Unaweza itumia hiyo peke yake bila kununua fertilizer nyingine. Unaweza tumia tu hiyo for Yes, utaweza kuitumia for kwa muda mrefu sana. Uh. Kwa maana inasaidia ina effect ya yote. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the all these plants easy imetumia hiyo Iyo, iyo waste kama fertilizer, sindi? Kapisa imetumia. Ah, yeah. okay. So, um, ukitu explain ya pia, tunona hapa kuna land yenye, bado iko aina mimea. Yeah. So, uh, ebu to explain ya nini naendelea hapa, exactly? Hapa, mm -hmm. nilikuwa na spinaji, mm -hmm. lakini nimeitoa. Sasa nimefanya preparation, nimechukua compost, nimeweka. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sana nataka kueka. It type ingine ya mimea. Oh, yeah. type ingine? Yeah. All right. So, kuna difference gani between he, he type of kuplant, na hile nye tumeona uko hile vertical, hile nye nenda juu? Ya vertical, mm -hmm. mzuri, inachukua space kidogo, 
lakini unapata mimea mingi. Mm. Lakini ya chini inachukua space kubwa lakini mimea siyo mingi sana. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay, na hiyo bio waste, hiyo waste yenye tunatoa kutoka kwa biodigester. Yeah. Inasaidia aje the soil inaongezea nutrients ama able to explain hiyo because kwa sababu plants zimewekwa kwa kwa, yeah. kwa shamba yeah. alafu hiyo pia inaongezwa hapo yeah. so ni nutrients gani inaongeza kwa soil yenye inaweza saidia mimea ku grow uh, inaongeza nutrients ya kusaidia mimea ikuwe mzuri kabisa mm -hmm. yeah all right ukiona kama iko weak ita make it kuwa kuja strong yeah mm. and health Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Na sasa hiyo waste. Yeah. Uh, uh unaeka for how long? Una apply for how long uh, kama fertilizer? Oh yeah. Sasa nafanya hivi kwa wiki naipatia mara pili. Mhm. Mm yeah. Kwa wiki. Uf, so hiyo ni 7 days ama ni 5 days? 7 days and mm -hmm. then I so kama I, naipatia Monday nitapatia kitu kama Saturday. Mm. Yeah. Oh, ukipatia Monday yeah. pia unaipatia sat Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, so hiyo west like ni every week unaipatia mara mbili mara mbili mara mbili mara mbili mara mbili. Oh. Na sasa for example hiyo west ikikuja kuna ingine inakuanga very um unajua iko na a lot of nutrients paka unasema ah hii nikiweka yeah. itaribu hii mimea kidogo ama inakuanga all the time iko balanced. I think inakuanga all the balance because is sijaona ikiwa strong sana ama weak iko the same mm -hmm. yeah all right na kuna vile wewe unapima ama ama unaweka tu ama wewe unapima yes, aje yes napima eh. niko na mita yenye napimanga ikiwa na acidity sana inanionyesha mm. eh sasa i cannot use it lakini kiona iko low najua iko sawa Oh so kuna sometimes the waste inakwanga na a lot of acid yeah. inakwanga acidity yake iko juu Ju, yeah. and the, is it sometimes does the soil have low acidity Yes paga ni pime tena mchanga mm -hmm. ni jua iko na low acidity ama hapana Na ikiwa nayo kama for, for example uki upime upate iko na acidity yenye yeah. ni low wewe yeah. unafanya nini ku improve the 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 structure and we could vizuri at a manageable oh. level so mm. i take compost i make compost then i start to use it kuitumia mchanga kupatisha hiyo mchanga mpaka wakati itarudi chini oh yeah. na sasa for example ume apply yeah. kwa mchanga yenye ilikuwa na ilikuwa na low, na, na low acidity yeah. na umerudisha imekuwa vizuri yeah. so inakuwa inatakingi how long do irudi vizuri una uki apply for example ume apply leo monday yeah. ama saturday vile wewe una apply for yeah. example will it take like two weeks ama one week ndio irudi vizuri ikiwa na acidity mingi eh yeah. ikiwa na wakati unataka kutengeneza soil sasa irudi vizuri yeah. eh inatakingi how long after ume apply inachukua tuseme it can take even 2 months. Ah. Yeah. Oh, so see immediately yeah, ukieka hii wiki. No. Sasa next week unajua mtu no. anasema <laughs> mimi zinataka ku apply hii wiki yeah. ndio next week nipande. Ah, no. <laughs> oh, yes. so it take 2 months. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So unaweza tuonyesha tu around tuonyeshe exactly um plants gani mmepanda hapa. Yeah. So Josephat is going to take us round and show us some of the plants that they've um put under this um shamba uh, and then we'll see how they are nourishing how they are taking in the bio waste from the biodigester
We started in um, 2009. I was given a challenge to solve the problem of a community behind Nairobi National Park from felling trees. They were selling the trees for charcoal makers who were feeding the charcoal to the uh, growing um, Kitengela um, population. Um, so I proposed a flexible domestic biogas system. Um, that was our first launch of our domestic uh, systems. Uh, after rolling those out for about a year and a half or two years, um, we realized that wherever we were taking the biogas plants, um, nobody was using firewood, or, uh, sorry, the, the users were using firewood. Nobody was using charcoal. So, and firewood is collected. Nobody cuts down trees to, um, you know, to, to get firewood. So we were not meeting our objective. We were, of course, we were relieving a lot of stress from the rural people who were benefiting from the domestic biogas systems. There's a lot of health benefits from it, and of course there's a fertilizer benefit and the time-saving benefit. But we weren't saving the trees in any way. So we said, well, let's follow the charcoal trail. Let's see where does this lead us. And the charcoal trail, any road you look at, you, go, you get onto in Kenya and probably all around Africa, all the charcoal leads into town. So it's the urban uh, low-income populations that use charcoal as their fuel. Um, so, and that's where the charcoal was going from the, uh, the community in the back of the Nairobi National Park to uh, who are, who are uh, providing charcoal to Kitengela, sorry, to, uh, to, um, or to Kitengela town and, and the environs around there. So we said, okay, fine, how do we solve? Let's go back to our original objective, which was to solve the charcoal problem. Let's look at uh, how can we put biogas in town. And uh, we went through the whole compression thing, putting it in bottles, uh, very, very fun but expensive experimentation. Um, we learned that biogas, is, it's, it can be put in bottles, but it's not practically viable. Uh, the easiest way to get gas to people in town is to put the digester where the people are. The people in town generate the organic waste. So you clean up the organic waste, go straight in the digester where the people are, and you pipe the gas into either communal kitchens or directly into commercial kitchens, um, and you offset the charcoal uh, in that way. Um, to the next level uh, was now the municipal waste management, because now once you start getting into large capacity um, uh, organic material waste, of course, the biggest place where you're going to find the most organic waste is in marketplaces. Uh, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the fruit and vegetables that are grown in Africa end up in the landfill or end up going to waste. A lot of huge percentage ends up in the landfill. Um, the landfills drip juices down into the rivers and turn the rivers black. At the same time, they uh, release huge amounts of greenhouse gas. Those greenhouse gases are methane. That's flammable gas. But when it's diluted in the atmosphere and you can't capture it, then of course it's useless to you. But these are all contributing to uh, global warming. So um, once you have put your digester in the middle of town where the population is, all of that organic material that's going in the digester was made up of nutrients that were pulled out of the soil on some farm somewhere. So it is actually uh, nutrients. Uh, instead of throwing it away down the rivers, ends up in the lakes, ends up in the sea, um, you know, when, while it's in the freshwater basins, it's creating huge uh, menaces with the, the water hyacinth and all of those sort of things. Um, but when you put it in a digester, you get back the minerals and the nutrients uh, in a form that roots can uptake very, very easily. So the actual output from the digester, which is a biofertilizer, is actually more valuable than the gas itself uh, in terms of shillings and cents. Um, it is a liquid, so it's a bit heavy to transport. Uh, that's why we make compost with some of it and then we, we um, impregnate the compost with the, uh, the liquid and then dry it again. So now you have a enriched uh, compost for applying to farms. Um, so you're, what we're doing, in effect, is we're creating a circular economy around the nutrients. The nutrients come from the farm, they come into the town. The ones that don't get eaten end up going back into the biogas digester, back into fertilizer, back to the farm, into new food, come back into town. So it takes it all out of the rivers. 
So we're keeping the rivers, we're stopping the rivers from getting contaminated. Uh, cleaning rivers, if, if your rivers, if you keep them clean, you don't need to clean them. All the plastics and the papers and those bottles you see being cleaned up around river, river, um, river banks, that's cosmetic. It's cleaning the river, uh, the river sides. The river is the water. If you're not cleaning the water, then you're not really cleaning um, the river. You're making it look nice, but you're not actually cleaning it. So our objective is to get all of those people who are interested in um, cleaning the rivers, get involved in these programs, and let's go back to how do we stop that contaminant getting into the water in the first place. Once you stop the, con the, the organic material going into the water, by default, you've already stopped the plastics. So you won't have plastics and what have you collecting on the riverbanks. Um, well, the model here is decentralized waste management, which means that we don't have a Dandora. Ngong town is, is you know, it's a stone throw away. It's not, we're, not, we're in town, actually. And the amount of land we're using is tiny compared to they the amount of, that, they would, that would, it would cost in moving this waste to a landfill and managing it there. They would never make that in terms of rent. So trade-wise, it makes much more sense to have small pockets scattered around every town and manage the waste at source in all those pockets. You, you've taken away all of those trucks, you've taken, away all of the, you've taken away the need for a landfill in the first place, so your rivers are automatically clean, and you created numerous jobs. So if every town can adopt this concept and just have modular recycle centers or recycle recovery centers, um, you know, everywhere where you have organic uh, bulk waste collecting, um, you know, minimizing the transport of the waste is key to stopping it from getting mixed. Once it's mixed, it's, 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 it's just not cost effective to separate. Um, so having modular um, recycle recovery centers where you are stopping the waste from getting mixed, that is the key to having, uh, you know, sustainable, um, uh, renewable and uh, recycling material. Nobody likes recycling dirty rubbish. Um, it's much easier when it's kept clean. The plastic, people want clean plastic. The glass, people want clean glass. The, we want clean organic. We don't want the diapers and what have you in it. The diapers go into the incinerator and we recover the heat. So the diapers actually become a fuel source uh, for, for, for creating energy. And that energy is hot water now, can be used for multi, you know, many different micro enterprises. Laundry, showers, drying fruits and vegetables, all sorts of things. It's basically hot water. Um, so. Like, as I said, the key to the successful recycle center is separating the waste at source. And then um, it's very, very easy uh, to manage. Today we have learned a lot on biogas production. We have seen the process of bio waste. We have seen the waste from when they are collected into the biodigester and eventually also converted as fertilizer for the farm. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Let's meet next time, same place at AgriTalk. <laughs>